Joe Biden calls out the ultra MAGA crowd and the great MAGA king. The Minister of Truth, Nina Jankowicz, is under fire for yet another statement. Plus, the baby formula shortage marks another Biden failure in the eyes of the voters. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and his latest attempts to take the spotlight off himself and his failed policies and put it on former President Trump and the Republicans. There's just one problem. Well, actually, there's a lot of problems, but one that certainly stands out is that in order to change the narrative between yourself and an opponent, you either have to start doing things really well and talk about it, or your opponent has to be doing things really poorly, and you talk about that. The problem with Biden is that he's not doing anything well, nothing. In poll after poll after poll, not only is his overall job approval in the upper 30s, but on all the major issues, the American people give Biden failing grades. So what does Biden and his crack team of advisors come up with? Do they work on lowering inflation? No. Do they address the baby formula shortage? Not a chance. Does Biden and Harris and the administration fix the border or the economy or address cancel culture or woke ideology? Nothing like that. Instead, Biden has decided to attack and divide. That's nothing new for him, but I just wanted to phrase it like that because the media love to portray Biden as some kind of uniter, yet he attacks at every opportunity. He's called people who support voter ID, which is most people, supporters of Jim Crow. He called those who want to keep the filibuster domestic enemies. Now he's going after the so-called MAGA crowd because apparently the MAGA crowd and not Joe Biden is what's causing all of America's problems. Here's Biden. What happens if you have a uh, state ch change the law saying that that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children. Is that, is that legit under the way that the decision is written? What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history, in recent American history. The most extreme organization in American history. Then he adds recent American history. Well, even recently, we've had BLM riots where people were killed, businesses were burned to the ground, property destroyed, and the Democrats said nothing. We have Antifa who threaten and deliver violence, and the Democrats don't even acknowledge they exist. And we can go on and on with left-wing terror groups over the course of American history. But Biden attacks the MAGA crowd as the worst thing ever. But that was just the start. Then Biden ups the rhetoric from MAGA to ultra MAGA. Americans have a choice right now between two paths, reflecting two very different sets of values. My plan attacks inflation and grows the economy by lowering costs for working families, giving workers well-deserved raises, reducing the deficit by historic levels, and making big corporations and the very wealthiest Americans pay their fair share. The other path is the ultra MAGA plan put forward by congressional Republicans. What can you even say? Let's just dissect that clip for a bit. First off, Biden says that his plan attacks inflation and grows the economy. For one thing, inflation is getting worse. And for another, the economy actually shrank last quarter. So the two main things that Biden mentioned, he and his administration aren't getting the job done. Costs are not going down. The deficit is not going down. So that's the Biden side. Then he said there's another path, the ultra MAGA plan put forward by congressional Republicans. I don't know about you, but whoever is coming up with Biden's messaging strategy needs to be fired. Not only in, did Biden list out the issues which his administration is failing, but then he pointed out that there's an alternative out there, something other than Biden's policies. Which one do you think the American people will pick? Whether you call it ultra MAGA or something else, it's not Joe Biden. And he just laid that out for everyone. 
If it comes down to Biden's record versus ultra MAGA, which would you pick? The American people are getting hit in the gut with inflation, gas prices, drugs, and illegal aliens pouring across the border, food shortages, and more. If that's the Biden side, the American people are going to pick the other. Then, because the Biden team is so proud of this new messaging campaign, Biden upped it even more, this time calling out former President Trump directly. It's called, I call, I call it the ultra MAGA plan and the ultra MAGA Republicans. The MAGA Republicans are under my predecessor, the great MAGA king. The great MAGA king. That's Biden's big barn on Trump. Yep, smart move. Of course, Trump jumped right in, posting on Truth Social that the great MAGA king is the name Joe Biden is now using to describe me. Thank you, Joe. Make America great again. In addition, this meme popped up on Truth Social showing the return of the great MAGA king. Way to go, Joe Biden. And how about you give your strategy and messaging folks a little raise? Not only are you failing on policy and pointing it out, but you're also pointing people to an alternative and firing up your opponents. Great job. All right, next let's talk about Biden's Ministry of Truth. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next we have Nina Jankowitz, who was picked by Joe Biden to head the Disinformation Governance Board, which is run out of the Department of Homeland Security. If this sounds like something straight from George Orwell's Ministry of Truth, it is. But here's the thing. Jankowitz, the so-called disinformation expert, is just another left-wing hack who peddles in disinformation. Jankowitz first received attention when her Mary Poppins video surfaced in which she, you guessed it, was spreading disinformation. Information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo, and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh! Yep, this is a government official who now heads Biden's Ministry of Truth. She has spread disinformation about COVID. She dismissed Hunter Biden's laptop, and. She recently said this. There's already this idea, this allegation <clears throat> that there is anti-conservative bias on the platforms, even though there has been study after study proving, in fact, that often it's liberal voices that are being silenced, particularly minority voices um, on social media. So I think we're going to see more allegations of that. Unreal. What she said there has no basis in truth. It is well known, not just from user experience, but from those on the inside that big tech tries to shut down conservative voices. It's obvious. And yet Biden's truth minister is spreading a flat out lie. Now, Jankowitz is taking heat for saying that verified Twitter users, such as herself, should be able to edit other users' comments. So verified people can um, essentially start to edit Twitter the, the same sort of way that Wikipedia is, so they can add context to certain tweets. Um, so just as a easy example, not from any political standpoint, if president Trump were still on Twitter and tweeted a claim about voter fraud, someone could add context. I love how she picks an example, not to be political, that is highly political. She adds that this edit feature will allow verified users such as herself to add context, but adding context already exists. It's called a comment. Just make a comment. But. She and the left don't want replies because that's too much like debate or discussion. They want to drive the narrative in which one and only one direction exists. This is not freedom, folks. It's tyranny. All right, next let's talk about the baby formula shortage and its fallout, not only for mothers, but for the Biden administration after a word from our sponsor. I want to tell you about my friends over at World Fair. If you have a photo of your childhood home, your favorite travel spot, your hometown football stadium, whatever it is, World Fair takes that photo and turns it into a hand-drawn work of art. These sketches make great gifts, moving announcement cards, 
invitations, and more. So many possibilities that World Fair can do for you. And all you need is a photo. Just use the link in the description and use coupon code BOBBY13 for 10% off your next purchase. So next, as you've probably been hearing, there is a massive shortage of baby formula in America. Back in February, one of the few large manufacturers of baby formula was cited for safety violations from the FDA. And with few suppliers, this halt in production has led to a full out crisis. But it's now May, and this happened back in February. So many people, not just mothers, are asking why wasn't anything done to plan for this or to warn mothers to stock up and prepare? Good questions. And the Biden administration doesn't have the answers. And this is leading to yet another issue which voters are giving Biden a failing grade. Here's the story. Images of empty store shelves and stories of frantic parents searching for food for their infants, coupled with reports that the Biden administration is shipping pallets of scarce formula to the southern border to feed illegal immigrant children, now threaten to crater the party's weakened support among suburban women. Democrats have seen a double-digit decline among their strongest groups, especially women who are already struggling to stretch a dollar, Republican strategist Ryan Gurdusky told the Washington Times. But now, they're trying to find food for their children. Women were a pivotal voting bloc for Biden and other Democrats in 2020. Exit polls showed they backed Mr. Biden over President Trump by 57% to 42%. So, while pallets of baby formula are being shipped to the border, American store shelves are becoming bare. And this adds to a growing list of failures from the Biden administration, which are being picked up in the latest polls. Here's more. Over the past few months, though, polls show women have soured on Mr. Biden. Although the president won't be on November ballots, congressional Democrats have been sinking along with him in the eyes of female voters dealing with skyrocketing inflation, gas prices, and now a formula shortage. That hits home, said David Palialogos, director of the Suffolk University Political Research Center. You can't get any closer to a suburban woman than making her run all over the place to find baby food. There is nothing that hits that demographic more directly than not having what your infant needs every day. Amen to that. Biden is sinking, and he's sinking fast. A Marist poll conducted in late April showed suburban women favored Republicans over Democrats on handling two top voter concerns the economy, and inflation. Among parents with children younger than 18, registered voters said they would put a Republican over a Democrat in November's congressional elections by nearly a 30-point margin, 60% to 32%. That's just incredible. And it shows that when Democrats embrace far-left policies and incompetent leadership, the American people will turn to leaders who actually understand basic concepts like strong families, safe communities, and opportunity for all. And speaking of incompetent leadership, I've talked plenty about Joe Biden, but how about Kamala Harris? She was out there again, creating a new version of a word salad. I read a great description of her the other day as being similar to an eighth grader trying to and struggling with a 500 word essay when she only has 100 words. So she just keeps repeating the same stuff in an incoherent mess. Remember this one? We also recognize, just as it has been in the United States for Jamaica, one of the issues that has been presented as an issue that is economic in the way of its impact has been the pandemic. So to that end, we are announcing today also that we will assist Jamaica in COVID recovery um, by assisting in terms of the recovery efforts in Jamaica that have been essential to, I believe, what is necessary to strengthen not only uh, the, the, the issue of public health, but also the economy. Wow, we are going to assist by assisting and strengthen by strengthening. Makes a lot of sense, right? But now, Harris's big thing is working together. And in a recent statement, Harris shows that she really, really wants to work together. That is especially true when it comes to the climate crisis, which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements 
that we will convene to work together on to galvanize global action. With that, I thank you all. This is a matter of urgent priority for all of us, and I know we will work on this together. Where does one begin to explain what's going on there? The American people are learning what happens when you put control of the country into the hands of people who can't do the job. On the one hand, you just crack up watching these clips of Biden and Harris and Jankowitz. On the other hand, these are government officials who wield enormous power. It's time to take that power and return it to the people. November 2022 and 2024 can't come soon enough. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our next show is going to be Friday evening at the usual time, 6.30 p.m. Central. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.